Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. It's another in the student exemplar series. Today we're looking at an answer on an inspector calls from Elsie from Essex. Now if you want to have your work featured in this series you can email a piece to info at mrbruff.com and if we use it in a video I'll send you two free ebooks. Now let's start off by looking at the question. An inspector calls has been described as a play about secrets and lies. To what extent do you agree with this view? Now this kind of question might surprise some of you. Being given an opinion and asked to respond to it is perhaps not what you've been preparing for, but actually of the three exams we've had so far, when it comes to AQA English Literature Paper 2 Section A, there were 72 questions if you look at the questions for each and every text, and nine questions out of those 72 have been structured like this, giving you an opinion, giving you something in quotation marks, and asking you to respond to it. So don't forget fall into the trap of assuming that questions are always going to be one on character or one on theme. They can be structured like this. Let's get into the answer. Secrets and lies can be destructive and unkind, and in the play we see how concealing the truth and behaving in a duplicitous way leads to unhappiness and vulnerability when Eva Smith tries to end her life by drinking disinfectant. Priestly questions how a family can function when its members cannot be honest with each other and looks at to what extent damage can be repaired after a secret has been revealed. So here's a nice introduction and it presents essentially the line of argument the full answer is going to follow. Now you don't get specific marks for your introduction but it's good to have a brief opening statement which essentially says look this is the line of argument, this is the hypothesis that I'm going to explore in my answer. And I like the way that this introduction references Priestley, makes it very clear early on that this is not a group of real people but they are characters and that the playwright J.B. Priestley is using them to ask questions. The play begins and ends with characters trying to keep secrets from others. When the play opens we're almost immediately given the hint that Gerald has been up to something last summer when he didn't come near Sheila and also Eric is described in the stage directions as not quite at ease. At the end of the play Mr Burling is keen to continue the secret of Eric's theft and tells him he must repay the money and also suggests to Sheila that they continue to hide Gerald's secret when he says she should ask for that ring back. These secrets within the family suggest that the relationship that they all have with each other is weak and implies that it is lacking in trust. On the surface it seems as though these are people who live respectable lives and yet underneath we see the ugly truth of their behaviour. At the end of the play we see the characters who have genuinely been changed by Inspector Gould's direction are the ones who are now willing to have their secrets out in the open and the characters like Mr Burling, Mrs Burling and Gerald are the ones who wish to continue living lives of deceit. When Gerald offers Sheila the ring at her father's bequest, the ring symbolises a normality that existed before the play began. Had Sheila accepted, it would signal to the audience that in fact she had not changed and her regret was only temporary like Gerald's. However, Sheila turns down his offer, revealing to the audience that her worldview has been forever changed. Okay, so what do we like about this paragraph? I really like this idea of the symbolic meaning of the ring. That is something that goes beyond just the literal um, analysing when this happens it makes us think this and actually looking at the hidden meaning, the deeper meaning beneath the surface. Symbolism here being explored when it comes to the ring and Sheila's refusal to take it back and what that might symbolise. The other thing I like is the look at which characters change and which don't. We have to be really careful when we're analysing characters that we don't just say they are like this. So often characters change in the text and we see that with Sheila here and then sometimes characters don't change and both are important. We should always look at when we're analysing a literature text, what are the characters like at the beginning, what are they like at the end? Have they progressed, have they changed or are they the same and what is the writer saying through that? On to the next paragraph. Burling's relationship with his son seems fractured from the very outset of the play and instead of confiding in his son about his upcoming honour, he instead tells Gerald so long as they behave themselves he has a very good chance of knighthood. The audience would see this shunning of Eric as a suggestion that Mr Burling cares more about the opinion of his future son-in-law than he does about his own child, implying that Burling is impressed by Gerald's privileged background and wishes to climb higher socially. In 1912 this kind of preoccupation with the social classes was more common than in 1947 when following World War II the public opinion towards aristocracy and the royal family became more critical. 
Priestley is condemning Burling's attitude through this awkward scene where an older man is clambering to impress someone who is junior to him in years, but due to his birth is senior to him in class. Priestley also uses the foreshadowing of Burling's comment about being a nice family to sow the suggestion in the audience's mind that things are about to go wrong, when coupled with the dramatic irony of his predictions about the Titanic, the war and economic growth, we have learned that Burling is a character who is regularly incorrect with his predictions. Okay, so looking at this paragraph, I like what Elsie has written about context. Remember, there are six marks for AQA on this question awarded for context, and that really means that context is drip-fed into the answer where appropriate. So if you actually have a look at my playlist, which is called Full Marks Answers for GCSE English Literature, I look at a full marks answer and look at just how much is written about context, and that will hopefully give you a good guide. The secrets and lies that occur in the play are all driven by different motivations. When Gerald Gerald lies about his affair, it is so he can continue two relationships at the same time. Eric lies about the baby and the theft to avoid trouble at work, and Mrs Burling lies in order to avoid Inspector Gould's questions. However, Eva Smith's lie that her name was Mrs Burling was the reason Mrs Burling decided not to help her as she became biased towards her and ultimately led to her death. On first impression, Mrs Burling seems to be trying to serve her community by chairing the charity board. However, it's clear from her comments she merely wishes to feel important and have the say over what other people are entitled to. Whilst the other characters' lies have occurred without consequence for them, Eva Smith's lie, that she would have only told out of shame and embarrassment, resulted in her death. Priestley seems to be criticising the freedoms afforded to the upper classes by contrasting the treatment of people once their lies have been revealed. Eva Smith is refused help when she was at her most desperate point in life, and the Burlings and Gerald all could carry on with their privileged existence. Priestley seems to be suggesting that the audience should consider how they treat the weaker members of society through this allegorical play where Eva Smith represents the millions and millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths that exist in the world. Priestley's scathing critique of Edwardian England depicts a morally corrupt society that puts on airs, pretending to be better than it is. However, the consequences of the character's actions are dire, and Priestley brutally serves them up as a stark warning to his post-war audience against the risk of returning to the bad ways of the past. Now, what I really like about this paragraph, among other things, is that it says, OK, well, this is what happens in the play, but what is Priestley saying then about society? What is his message to the audience? Well, I hope you found this video useful. And what I would love you to do in the comments section is to put some comments about what else could you add to this answer? Is there anything perhaps that in this question you think, well, actually, I would have gone on to write about this? If you found this video useful and you'd like more in the Student Exemplar series, then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.